lovies and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the first in a series that I have started on my channel which is a beginner series. I am so sorry I know I have been uploading for a few years now on YouTube and I've never done a beginner series. I'm not saying I'm perfect at makeup, I'm not a makeup artist but I have learned a couple of tips and tricks along the way and I think they might help some of my viewers. So whether you're a teenager in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and you're just getting into makeup for the first time, I think some of these tips and tricks in my videos may help. I don't know, they might not. You might be like, wow girl, you know nothing about makeup. Today I'm going to start off with the eyes. Now I'm not going to do lashes, I'm not going to do wing liner in this video. It's just about application of eyeshadow. It's like the number one thing when I look back on old pictures of myself, I'm like, girl, your eyeshadow, blend it more please. And I just wish I could get in there with a brush and blend it. So I have a couple of tips that might help you guys out and who knows, maybe you might learn something new. I'm going to be really basic in this video and just use a really basic eye look which is the one I'm sporting today. Yeah let's head on into the eyes and see how I achieve this look and my tips for you guys who are just getting into makeup or beginners. Okay first off guys sorry I sound a bit nasy I'm in a little bit sick at the moment and I completely deleted this whole section of the video so I'm refilming it now on a different day. To start we are going to take a primer and I'm going to take a really affordable one this is the Maybelline Colour Tattoo Primer and it is in the colour Creme de Rose. This is a skin tone shade. The purpose of a primer is you set it onto your eyelid and what it does is it basically primes the eyelid prior to putting any shadows on it. It will stop your shadows from creasing, keep them vibrant throughout the day, it will stop them from fading, it will stop them from seeping into fine lines. So we're just gonna blend that in with our finger. Next step is you need to set that base. So I'm just gonna take a translucent powder. This is just Rimmel's one and I'm just taking it on any sort of brush. You just need to set that base just like with your foundation. This will just make sure that the eyeshadows that go on top will go on seamlessly. I have a ton of different brushes here I wanna talk to you guys about. We're not gonna use all of them today. I do have a beginner's brush video which I will link down below so that will help so I'm going to talk about them as I'm going through them okay so if you're fair these three here will be excellent and then moving up the line constantly the deeper your skin tone gets this will just add a little bit more definition obviously if you have quite a deep skin tone these shadows should be fine or these three will be fine either. So depending on your skin tone, you wanna go with two or three shadows. Now they don't have to be neutrals, they can be pinks, they can be purples. I'm just going with neutrals for this video just to show you an easy, simple, neutral look to follow. So I am gonna go in with this shade here, which is actually Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek. I'm gonna take that on my Morphe M504 brush. I love this brush because it's a really big, fluffy brush that's exactly what you want to add color into the crease as a transition so just taking that peach smoothie shade I'm just gonna pop that straight into my crease so the reason why you take this lighter shade to pop in through the crease is because if you want to create any sort of look whether it be a smoky look a halo eye look a cut crease anything like that you want to create a transition and this will make it easier to pop any colors that you want on top of it. So we're just going to lightly place that through the crease. Any shadows that go on top of it will go on effortlessly. So I'm bringing it all the way into the inner corner and all the way out. And you can just see what I'm doing. I'm kind of doing backwards and forward motions like a windscreen wiper. Once you're kind of left with something like this, just a wash of color, you're ready to go onto your next shade. Next, I'm taking a smaller brush and you can see it beside the original brush. This is just a little bit more detailed. This will allow me to control where I'm putting the shadows just a little bit more, whereas this covers a larger surface area. So we're going in with the smaller one next. I'm gonna pick up my next darker shade, which is actually this one here. I could go with this one, but this one will show up a lot more in my crease. Just going to apply a very light application of that, and we're staying a little bit lower than the peach smoothie shade. So I'm just keeping this right into my crease. Best to kind of open your eye when you are doing this, just so you can see exactly where your crease is. If you have your eye shut like that, you won't really be able to tell where your crease is. You might be able to feel it, but when your eye is open, it will give you a better indication of where your crease is. So again, I'm placing the shadow in the exact same position as I placed peach smoothie. Don't want to go in with too much shadow because it will end up being very, very, very messy. I can link down my eyeshadow do's and don'ts as well because that may help also. Best to apply the most eyeshadow out here and then kind of lift the pressure on your brush as you bring it into the inner corner. If you create more depth out here, it will just give the impression that your eye is kind of a little bit more lifted. Now, if you feel at any stage that this eyeshadow has got a bit messy or anything like that, you can go back in with that original brush and you can just 
blend it out with nothing on the brush obviously. So now you have kind of like a basic eye look that you can do anything with. You can go in with dark shadows, different colored shadows now at this stage. But personally, I like a little bit more depth out here. So you can leave this as it is. You can go in with a shimmery shade all over the lid and be done with it and you're good to go. But like I said, I like a little bit more depth out here. So I'm going to show you how I build that up. So I'm going to take an even smaller brush because I'm working on a much smaller area. I'm just working on the outer V here. So this smaller brush is going to work much better for me. And that is the Morphe M506 brush. So I'm going to go in with this shade here. It's like a really nice warm brown called Coco Bear. And I love this. So I'm going to go in with that little tiny brush and just apply the shadows on the outer corner. Again, this is where you're applying the most pressure, so you're going to get the most color payoff. And I'm just kind of doing little circular motions here, just to apply the shadow, whereas before I was going like back and forward. This is just kind of like a little bit of circular motions. I'm leaving it right on the outer corner because I want the most intensity out there. As you can see, I'm kind of dragging it out a little bit as well, just to create that kind of V shape, and then bringing it straight into the crease. And I'm not going to bring it the whole way in like I did with the other shadows. We're just going to bring it in about a third of the way. This is just going to elongate your eye. You can already see the shape coming along quite nicely there. It's more of a cat eye shape and it's giving a bit of lift to that outer corner of the eye. Be sparing with the product that you use, less is more, because if you go in with an awful lot of shadow, it's going to be very difficult to blend it out. Whereas if you have a little bit of shadow, it makes this process much easier. So I'm just kind of blending that into the outer V. And then again, going back in with that original brush that I used from Morphe and just kind of blend out any harsh lines. I like the way it's deeper in the outer corner, so it's bringing all the attention and lifting my eye. Now I'm gonna add a bit of color. I'm taking Cherry Cola. It's like a gorgeous maroon shade. And I'm going in with another small, tiny, tiny detail brush. And this is the Morphe M507. And it's just kind of a little bit more angled. You can see that. So again, for more precise work, go in with smaller brushes. If you want to create more blending, then go in with a larger brush. This will just blend more of your shadows lightly. I'm tapping off any of the excess. I'm gonna kind of place it in the same position as I placed Coco Bear, lightly applying this and blending it into my crease. Again, I'm keeping my eye open all the time so I can see exactly what I am doing. It's not a bad idea in between applying it just to blend out any of the harsh lines, but when you have all the harsh lines seamlessly blended out, it just looks a little bit more professional, that's all. But you will get there with practice. I mean, I didn't wake up one day and was able to blend. It took an awful lot of practice. The way that you apply your product is the most important thing and the brushes that you use really are going to amp up your look. And now it's time to apply some shadow onto the lid. You can go in with matte, shimmery, whatever you would like. I'm taking this shade here and this is called In The Spotlight from Makeup Geek. And now I'm moving on to a completely different brush, one that we haven't seen yet. And this is a flat shader brush. The reason why I'm using this and I'm not using a fluffy brush is this will pack on a little bit more shadow for me and just create a little bit more intensity than if I used a fluffy brush. Remember I showed you earlier how fluffy brushes can disperse the shadow and you can barely even see it, which is what you want for a transition, but not for a lid shape. So pick up a tiny bit of shadow at a time, pat it onto the lid, and then move the shadow as you need to, wherever, wherever you want to put it. So once you're happy with the position of the shadow on the lid, whatever you've used, matte, shimmery, whatever, you need to kind of make sure that all the lines around that shadow are cleaned up, so no harshness, remember? So I'm gonna go back in with that brush that I used, the second brush I used. I'm just gonna use that to clean up any harsh lines and just make sure that it looks seamless. There's no shadow on this brush. And then again, where the shadow meets the darker shade, just wanna blend them back and forth between each other. And if you feel like you lost any intensity on the outer V, go back in with your purple shade or your brown or whatever you were using and just kind of back and forth blend it into the lid shade. You haven't done too much work to be honest, but you've just done the perfect amount to make sure that everything is blended, that there's no harsh lines, that everything looks seamless on the eye and it just looks really flattering. And then finally, just to open up the eyes, I'm gonna take this shadow here, which is called Shimmer Shimmer, and I'm just gonna take it on a teeny tiny pencil brush and place that into the inner corner of my eye. And this is just going to open up the inner corner a little bit more for me. And now underneath my brow, I'm taking a matte shade because I think there's an awful lot of shimmer on the lid and there's enough in the inner corner. I'm going to go in with a matte shade underneath the brow. So if you're happy with the shape and everything like that, then you're good to go with your liner. I'm not gonna do liner in this video. I will show you in a later video. I will show you lashes as well. Now you can move on to the lower lash line. So I'm going to take 
that same shade I applied on the lid, the In The Spotlight color from Makeup Geek. And just using a flat shader brush, I'm just gonna apply it on the inner portion of my eye. Now, you don't have to use a brush like this if you have a more precise one at home, go for it. But I'm just showing you that you don't need to buy a ton of different brushes you know, for Max to create any eye look. Go back in with that brush that I created the depth on the outer V, and I'm gonna apply Cherry Cola just underneath. So that's just gonna create a bit of depth under there and just make the whole eye look kind of merge a little bit better together. Thanks so much guys for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful and that I went through all the steps on the eyes. Like I said, I will be doing an upcoming video on how to apply eyelashes because I know that it is kind of a tricky one as well and wing liner. Don't even get me started on wing liner. I will get it wrong once in a while. Nobody's perfect, but I will show you my techniques of how to perfect it. Guys, if you are liking this beginner series and you wanna see more, then please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what other videos you would like to see. Thank you so much guys for watching. I love you so, so, so much, and I will talk to you very soon. Mwah.